How's it going everyone? College Lefty and in this video we have the second sixth inning boss clue to go over. We also have a sixth inning boss that has been revealed and I believe it is his first 99 overall card. We had a 97 overall version of Matt Kemp a few years ago and this time around we are getting a 99 overall Matt Kemp. There is also double XP taking place until this program will be released right we can level up our fifth inning program a little bit faster there's also a tops now collection that will help a little bit with that earning 35,000 xp but we do have a card art for the 30 30 club version of matt kemp this is a milestone player 39 home runs 40 stolen bases this card should be pretty good i don't necessarily think this will be the boss that i select I think the boss that we had revealed today will actually be a little bit more valuable than this 99 overall Matt Kemp. We only have a clue, but I believe that people in the community have been able to confirm that this clue right here is related to George Brett. But George Brett was not the first player that I thought about while reading these clues. MLB The Show Card Art, a person who creates virtual cards uh, that we might see in the game, right, concept types of cards, uh, commented on my tweet saying that this looks like George Brett. Now, the first player I thought about was actually Barry Larkin, and the thing that was throwing me off was his power against lefties, the power against righties as well, because he's generally had these types of splits in previous years. He also has a lot more speed than what's depicted on those clues. So when I'm looking at the older version of George Brett, this looks to be almost identical to the card that we saw revealed with those clues. Now, the one thing I'm thinking about is that this George Brett that we see in MLB The Show 21 might have over 100 power against Wright, which would be great. It does look that way in the screenshot, but everything else seems to match up almost perfectly. The bunting attribute, though, is throwing me off a little bit for both of the players that I'm thinking about, Barry Larkin and George Brett. I think we have to go with George Brett and also shout out to the other people that also commented George Brett on the tweet. I was on my way home from work. I figured I would ask that question because I was thinking about a couple different players, but we're going to go ahead and hop into a game of ranked seasons. The most recent game of ranked seasons that I've played, I, I was absolutely terrible at the plate, but honestly, in all phases, of the game as well. I wasn't pitching well. I wasn't hitting well. I didn't play defense that great. Um, but in this one, we had a couple guys in scoring position and we got out of the inning. We had to get the confidence up on some of those off speed pitches with Lefty Grove. His changeup is probably the X factor, the pitch that has the most value and significance while using him because of the outlier, because of the 82 to 85 mile per hour changeup. I think that that is the go-to strikeout pitch. That is the go-to pitch in general with that card. We are able to go deep with Francisco Lindor. We take a one nothing lead, and I'm already feeling much better at the plate. I'm able to pick up pitches out of Vita Blue's hand a little bit easier. I've just noticed that I feel a lot more comfortable at the plate, feel a lot more comfortable with the controller in my hand, moving around the PCI a little bit, and that just depends on the day, right? The previous game I played yesterday, I was not playing well at all. And here we go back to back to back. Three homers in the first inning. Kind of a weird play with Pablo Sanchez. Honestly, I don't I don't know what happened. Maybe he did not have the uh, throwing meter kind of working when he picked up the ball with Larry Walker in right field. But I definitely took advantage. We get the confidence lowered on his pitcher, Vita Blue, which is extremely important because Vita Blue has maxed out hits per nine. His K per nine is pretty good. Right, we're facing the parallel five version of Vita Blue, so he's just that much better. Uh, but here we're trying to mix in the off-speed pitch on the outer half of the zone. I'd thrown the fastball a few times on the outside half, but not really anything off-speed. So I wanted to try it. Obviously, he got a base hit with Jorge Posada, and then he gets a little bit of a late base hit with Mike Piazza. Definitely a good swing, slider low and inside. It was a late hit, but it was certainly uh, you know a a great swing. A, he has a guy with 125 contact. Can't complain there. Uh, but now we're facing Vita Blue. I thought he was going to bunt, so I went with the fastball up and inside. We go back to another one, and we get the pop-up. So he doesn't move the runners over, which is big. 
And now we get a strikeout on another Osby pitch low and inside and get out of the inning. So two innings in a row now. This opponent's had some base runners. Had an opportunity to break the game open, tie the game up, and we were able to pitch out of it. That is extremely helpful. Up by three runs. You know, I'm still trying to take better at-bats, trying to take better swings in general. We hit two perfects in a row with Jackie Robinson and Mike Piazza. Mike Piazza with the infield single. Now we have Lefty Grove laying down a bunt of his own. And I think the reason why he beat this out was mainly because of Jorge Posada. But also, he got a crazy good jump out of the box on that regular bunt, right? It wasn't even a drag bunt. We end up hitting into a double play with Mookie Betts regardless. Just didn't get under that slider. I was looking for that pitch. He had gone to it a few times. I just did not swing early enough and get under it. Uh, but Francisco Lindor picking us up. He has three out of the five RBIs in this one. Here we have Pablo Sanchez batting from the right side once again. Already hit a home run. Now he hits a perfect single. Here we have Vladimir Guerrero with the chance to break the game open. It's already 5-0, but we can really break the game open with a home run from him. Unfortunately, ground out to the third baseman. It is what it is. I was looking for a change up there. I swung way too early anyway. It was a slider, um, but I was really trying to get under it, pull that ball, and it was on the outer half. Anyway, we're in the top of the third. We are trying to get a 1-2-3 inning. We need a 1-2-3 to continue our consistency at the plate and to keep the momentum as well. Right? We have the confidence down on the pitcher. Our confidence for our pitcher is going up because we are able to establish some of these individual pitches. The way you get the confidence meter up on your pitcher significantly is by mixing in all five or all four, all three of their pitches. And we're able to get the quit. I felt like I would have been able to settle down with Lefty Grove, maybe avoid having runners in scoring position every inning, right? We had a one, two, three in the third, that opponent quit, but I, I really felt like I was going to play a lot better in that last game. But this is going to be the squad next time around. I'm going to be using Lou Brock in left field. That's really the only change. Everything else is pretty similar. I just want to add one more lefty. With a lot of speed, I think that Lou Brock card is extremely underrated. I think he's one of the better outfielders that we have that's not a 99 overall. Might even be the best outfielder that's not a base 99 overall player. You can obviously parallel that card up to the 95 tier, or 99 tier, I should say. Um, but this is the pitching staff. I replaced Shohei Otani with Felix Hernandez. I tried Felix Hernandez out for one game. I played a top player, and that was one of my only ranked seasons losses so far this season but that's gonna do it for this video let me know what you think about the bosses so far right we have matt kemp and then potentially george brett peace out